Welcome to the Plumes of Oz, where today we are going to look at the Eastern Coal, one of the most difficult birds I have ever found to photograph and present. It is so shy and retiring, a bird more often heard than seen. Here on the Hunter Coast of New South Wales, we have trees that attract these birds. It is the Tuckaroo, and it attracts not only coals, but also other frugivorous birds, like fig birds and channelbill cuckoos. Coals are cuckolids. They lay their eggs in other birds' nests. Coals found in Australia, coming here to breed, come from Papua New Guinea and Indonesia. They have all flown over the Torres Strait. Some stay in the north, others go to the east coast and fly south as far as Victoria. This results in two subspecies which are separated geographically. Hear that call? That's the call of a pair of coals. They are here on the Hunter Valley coastline of New South Wales. John Latham gave the first written description of the coal, but he was confused. He thought the male and the female were two distinct species of birds. In 1848, Gould corrected this. Today, we find that the coal comes into urbanised areas. Here is a male on an antenna and a female on a house roof. The reason coals are coming into urban areas is twofold. Firstly, the principal host of the coal on the coast is the wattle bird. And the wattle bird numbers in urban areas have increased. For they do well on hybrid species like red gums and grevilleas. The second reason is fruit. Many people have small backyard fruit trees like tomatoes and the coal is a frugivorous bird. Reading books of early ornithologists it is found now that the coal has increased its southern migration from Papua New Guinea down into Victoria. In the 1900s when Matthews wrote his book The Birds of Australia it was very rare to find them below Nowra. Today the migration goes much further south even as far as Melbourne. We can postulate various reasons for this global warming availability of frugivorous food along the east coast urban stretches and lastly the increasing numbers of red wattle birds associated with the stretching east coast urbanisation. Just quickly to mention a little bit about the taxonomic classification of these birds. The eastern coal is found east of the Wallace line. The western or Asian coal is found to the west. And in Wallachia itself, there is a third species with a black bill, Melanorhynchus, in Australia. The Australian female coal has either a brown morph or a black morph, as shown. The local subspecies name for the birds in New South Wales is Cyanocephalus, because the black has an iridescent blue mixed through it. Just look at this male. Look at that blue iridescence. Amazing. The eastern coal can be found on the east coast of Australia from October right through the summer. This bird breeds in Australia, then returns in winter to New Guinea where there is also a non-migratory population. Here on the coast, the red wattle bird appears to be the main host for this cuckolid brood parasite. The male coal arriving before the female usually scouts around for nests, for they are brood parasites and depend on adoptive parents to raise their chicks from the eggs. When the female arrives, they will perch together in a tree and then let out a chorus of duet calls. On hearing this duet, the surrounding birds that are nesting go into a panic mode, knowing that the coal may lay eggs and use their nest as a brood incubator. So with the duet, there is a lot of cacophony, but then the female slips away, and when they come up to investigate, they find the lonely male just calling, but a far more rapid call as if to say, all eyes are on me while the female drops her eggs in a brood nest. Some bigger birds like the currawongs can frighten the coal. Did you see him move back into the tree? He wasn't concerned with the wagtail, but as soon as the currawong call came through, he hid. And while he calls, the other birds are distracted, allowing the female to look for a suitable nest in which to lay her eggs. Thank you. 
The male has a favourite perch from which he calls, calling call, call, in the slow repetitive mode as she searches for a nest. More often than not, the female coal gets caught out trying to parasitise a nest. And here at the top of the frame, you can see the red wattle birds are upset with her. So she puts out a call, and you can hear the male coal calling as he flies in. The red wattle bird now turns their aggressive activity towards the male. The female slips away. The coal calling by himself as a lonely male does not seem to attract the attention as the duet call. Looking at the graph, you will see a rising crescendo with a slight increase in amplitude, duration and frequency of each call. Unfortunately, coals call early in the morning and go through late in the evening, but in the middle of the day, they roost. In 2001, two veterinary people described six vocalisations of the coal as shown in the attached table. The coal genera is Eudonymus, and the Australasian bird is called Orientalis, which makes it very confusing, as it is found only on the eastern side of the Wallace line, not in the Orient, parts of Indonesia. Papua New Guinea, Australia and Oceania. So even the name Pacific Coal does not apply correctly to this bird. The genera name Eudonymus really means fine dynamite. The trumpet manicured of the tropical north could be mistaken for a coal, but it has a black bill, short tail and a headdress. In contrast to the coals, flat head, long tail and a grey bill. I could not locate the nest where the coals had deposited their eggs, but certainly the red wattle birds became extremely active flying in and out and if you listen as we look at this tree you can hear a juvenile coal calling. The red wattle bird has been feeding the young insects but as it matures it needs and wants fruit. During the whole of the incubation the male coal keeps calling as though talking to the embryo and the egg and still when the bird is fledged he keeps calling maybe to tell the bird where there is fruit. summer. The fruit is getting a little bit dry now, but you can see that it's still plentiful. And at this point, the young coals are fledging. And this fairly nutritious fruit is what many of them will be eating. Here is a fledgling. We can't determine the sex at this stage, as male and female are identical. Ignoring the background laughter of the kookaburras, this bird is very interesting. A young male coal, but it still has rufous banding over the chest, suggesting it is immature. I never saw it at the beginning of the breeding season. Initially, I thought it was a fledgling, However, most people who have studied these birds believe it takes two molts for it to develop the full male attributes. So this is a bird at least one year out of the nest and not a fledgling. But here is the fledgling, very much like a female, but a lot more rufous around the throat. The sexual dimorphic nature of coals was a confusing picture in the early days. It was thought that the male and the female were indeed two separate species. The morphological change of a male coal going from the pale color to the black takes at least two molts or two years. Not quite as long as a satin bowerbird, which may take up to six years. This fledgling, as you can see, is very pale. And look, it is feasting on the tuckaroo seed. The coals are fledged and the coastal tuckaroo trees have plenty of fruit so now they will go on to their more frugivorous diet and the red wattle birds won't have to harvest so many insects and can go back 
to being honey eaters. Just a quick word on the call of these birds. They call, call, and the female more key, key, key. And some people believe this is how the bird got its name. But in fact, the term coal comes from Sanskrit. It really means echo and is very appropriate for the repetitive nature of the call of this bird. On behalf of Plumes of Oz, thank you for watching this video. We will now finish with the duet of the male and the female call, both calling together. The coal, 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 and the key, key, key.